sometimes people ask why would a soldier's wife living in Britain or as I was in Ireland where the my regiment was before it came to into the continent why we, we would want to be a camp follower rather than staying at home but we were some would come for love to follow their husband uh, if you're from a poor family as many soldiers were uh, life with a tent, a roof over your head, and meals, food and every day, meals a day. Uh, is no worse and sometimes better than what you had at home. A soldier's pay was uh, sporadic at best <laughs> and uh, never absolutely sure. And they deducted many things. And they deducted many things. And uh, even if they received their pay, how was a soldier going to get pay back to England or to Ireland We'd to never see it. provide for his wife? Yeah, and children. Uh, a woman would have a, a, no way to support herself if her husband was gone. She might be destitute, and so the best, uh, the best opportunity that she might have would be to follow her husband across the ocean and follow the army. And think, too, how long it takes to get communication. So if my husband was injured in battle or, or worse yet killed, I might not find out for many months if I found out at all. And nursing care in the army is so indifferent. Uh, and so if I can be here with him and he's injured, I'll, I can give him more attentive care than he would get from whoever might be there taking care of the injured soldiers and I'll know his fate. And so those were all reasons why I would want to be here with him. And of course, there were children in the British Army camps as well. Um, if if um, a British Army wife was hired to come with the army, if she had young children, they could come along. And and Brit children tended to come along in the <laughs> army as well. Absolutely, of course. You know, we the British Army was here seven, eight years for the American Revolution, so children would have been born along the way. I read a, about a census that was done of the whole British Army. I don't remember the year, I, perhaps 1780. And as I recall, it said there were 19,000 men in the army at that time, uh, almost 3,000 women and nearly 2,000 children. So that gives you a sense of the, the proportions. If the, if the soldier's wife was uh, upon the ration, in other words, if she were authorized to be in camp, her children also received a partial ration. They did, that quarter ration. Yeah. And uh, they would probably receive some sort of education from a sergeant or uh, another enlisted man who could read and write and mm -hmm. teach children. And run it. Um, not all women were so fortunate, however. Uh, the army uh, allowed a certain number of, of women to travel with the army. And uh, other women, um, may have found their way along with the army along the way and if they were not authorized to be there then it was a whole different story for them they had to they, they had they had to fend for themselves entirely they did not receive a ration find their own lodging their, children. their own way of uh, supporting themselves uh, documents seem to indicate that uh, women camp followers were very active in smuggling uh, rum and uh, other liquors into the uh, camp and selling them to soldiers because there are many orders uh, ordering them not to, so we know they were doing it. Yes, and uh, and I'm sure they were they were uh, also women on the edges of camps doing uh, other things that uh, women have done in armies for thousands, thousands of years. Of years and, and, as long as there have been armies, and commanders are are uh, not so keen on that either. So I think it would de depend on the individual commander. Uh, how much leeway I think he gave. in general the the uh, commanders frowned upon uh, unauthorized women sure. because of uh, maintaining good order it's in a distraction camp. to the men yes and so I think that uh, if you were not authorized to be there that that you were strongly encouraged to decamp I heard something interesting which was on the continental side um, at the beginning, I believe, of the war, they did not have so many women in the Continental Army, uh, I suppose because wives were staying home with their families and things. And uh, one observer said that the uh, Continental Army looked so much less clean, their linen was so dirty because they didn't have laundresses to wash. And I heard that General Washington, later in the war, um, said that he 
was felt obligated to hire on a lot of army wives because otherwise a lot of veteran old soldiers would just have gone home and not stayed. And cleanliness was important, don't you think? That yes, uh, um, perhaps in the 18th century they didn't know why, but uh, keeping things clean keeps uh, keeps people in better health, uh, keeps food from spoiling. Indeed, and uh, it just is is important in maintaining good order in the army. As you need well. people to do the laundry, to keep vermin down, and mm -hmm. to, yeah, to keep them he people healthy. Click the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notifications for new videos about George Washington and behind the scenes work at Mount Vernon.